<laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I, I'm really excited to be here and talk to you about motherhood. So I really, a lot of times I start my talks with asking how many in here are mothers? How many are mothers? Raise your hand. Keep them up, okay? Okay, who has a sister, a cousin, a friend who's a mother? Raise your hand. Okay, got to see a little more. Okay, who is who has a mother? <laughs> okay, right, right. So what you can see there, everyone in this room has something in common. We all have something in common, and that is motherhood. And motherhood is very powerful. Mothers are very powerful. We are connected through motherhood. And I just want to, as a marketer, I'm always um, interested in different terms and phrases. And lately, I've been thinking about the term motherhood matters. And there's a few different ways that you can use this. But right now, what I've been thinking about are the matters of motherhood. So the matters of motherhood could be anything from making sure that my daughter gets enough food in the morning and she has enough protein, right? It matters of motherhood, making sure that she, her education is a good education, making sure that um, she's healthy and that we're setting her up to be the best person that she can be. Today, just today, motherhood, my motherhood matters were the fact that I didn't have a babysitter, so she's here today. The babysitter canceled on me, so that's a motherhood matter. But what I want you to realize that mother, the motherhood matters are global matters. So think about it. Our biggest issues in this world are just about what I think about almost on a daily basis. Poverty, right? I think about making sure I have enough money to make sure we can take care of her and put shoes on her feet. Uh, lack of tolerance, I want to make sure she's a good person and that the people she surrounds herself are good people. Lack of education, this is what a problem that we have. I want to make sure that she's getting the best education that she can get. Our troubled economy, right? These are global issues. But to mothers, on a very micro level every day, we're thinking about those. These global issues are our issues every day. So the other way I think about motherhood matters is mothers are important. Mothers matter. They're important. Mothers, I would argue, are the most important group in this world if we want to change the world and make it a better place. Research shows that women are more likely than men to reinvest profits back into human capital. Right? So when, even in the most impoverished nations in the world, when a woman is on, on equal level and when they have economic power, they will reinvest back into their community, back into their children. And so when they, when they reinvest back into their children, they are making sure their kids have a better education. They make sure that their kids eat. They make sure that um, they're, they're safe. And this benefits directly to their development, right? So when their kids are healthy and eating right and doing well, this indirectly benefits the world as a whole. It actually lifts up the nation and makes it a more, uh, a more amazing uh, nation. <laughs> and, and, and the income growth for that nation grows. So, the other thing I really want you to know that mothers inherently, we want to do what's best for our children. We inherently want to be there for our children and be good people and make sure that they are good people. And so what's best for our children is best for this world, right? Just think about this. If you empowered the two, more than two billion mothers on this planet, to make sure that their kids have enough education, that they're fed well, there would be no war, there would be no poverty. There really wouldn't. Mothers would make sure as long as they were empowered to take care of their children. Mothers are powerful. We can change the world, but we can't do it on our own. First of all, mothers, we must own our power. 
we have to realize that our common trait of taking care of our children is more important and more powerful than all of our differences combined. And those of you who aren't mothers, I want you to realize that by sheer number alone, we mothers are a force to be reckoned with. By raising children, we're the cru we are absolutely crucial to peace and prosperity in this world. Why not raise up mothers to change this world and make it a better place? So right now, how does that relate to us? How does that relate right here in the United States? Well, I also want you to realize money talks, I understand that. We are a huge economic force in the United States. Mothers are responsible for more than $2.1 trillion in spending each year. We make more than 80% of all household purchases in the United States every year, right? Okay, mothers are powerful. And yet motherhood gets a bad rap. Um, there's the work at home versus the stay at home. There's uh, the, the comical mothers in the media. I mean, we're never just uh, portrayed as just, you know, regular people, right? We're, we've either got the yoga pants or we've got the wine drinking moms or the Facebook moms or we're the crafty moms or we're the ma martyr moms that, oh, that's all we do is think about our kids and, and make sure that our house is clean. The most egregious stereotype, however, are the welfare moms. You know, they don't care about their kids, obviously. Why do they keep having them, right? And all of this talk and all of this noise and judgment distracts from the fact that mothers are powerful and that by empowering mothers, you can change the world. So, just you know, so you know, I had a life before I had my daughter. I wasn't I was 39 years old. I was a real person. I got an MBA. Um, you know, I motherhood did not negate who I became before. Motherhood did not negate that I was a uh, that I'm a writer, that I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, that I've marched on Washington for women's rights. It didn't negate that I can rock an Excel spreadsheet, whether it being for a multi-million dollar marketing budget or my daughter's Halloween party. <laughs> I want you to realize that becoming a mother did not lessen who I am. It enhanced who I am. I'm a much more compassionate, knowledgeable, interesting, skillful person. And yet, once you become a mother, you're reduced and marginalized. The current systems we have in place here in the United States discourage engaged parenting by fathers. They squash the system. They squash the family and they marginalize motherhood. And I get it. We're all guilty of hanging on to the status quo, of just keeping with the status quo. It, if it doesn't concern us, why change it, right? Right now, most of you aren't moms. It doesn't concern you, right? But what I'm asking you to do today is to challenge the status quo, change the culture, empower mothers, and really, it starts in organizations and companies right now. It's not enough to provide on-site childcare. It's a start. Companies are they're moving along slowly. But really, the entire system of putting work before families must be reversed in order to change this world. Families must come first. Empower a mother empower a father, change the world. So also, it's not really that hard to empower a mother. From a $25 microloan for a woman in a third world country, right? They're very easy, look them up, to flex time for both men and women here in the United States. These seemingly small acts can have a direct and positive impact on a mother and her family, at impacting the world. And when you're looking for companies or the company that you're in, I want you to think about what, I want you to think a little bit differently. 
What's the leave policy in that company? Is it good for both men and women? Are they open to you working from home? Are there women in executive positions? Are there women on their boards? And wonder if you don't find that. I say start your own business. Start a business with family first as one of your core values and mean it. Change the work week. Change the work week from 40 plus hours a week to get your work done, do it well, go home, enjoy your life, right? Change the work week. That's a simple thing. But I do have to warn you that mothers can get more done in one day than most everybody else can get done in a week. So just going to say that you might not see as much. And company rec rooms, listen, I'm not against the keg on Fridays. I'm not against the foosball table, the ping pong. Put them in there. What I'm saying is, guess what? Kids get out of, get out of school at 3 o'clock when their parents have to work until at least 5 o'clock. Why not have a room for the kids when they can come and do their homework at the company? And let's get really radical here. Why not have other people in the company volunteer and get incentives for uh, for mentoring those kids. How about that? These are just small things that you can do and that you can have that expectation to help out mothers and to empower mothers and to change the world. Another thing is volunteer time. You know, we get asked to go volunteer for the schools, and that's great, but so many people can't do it. Working parents, it's close to impossible. Why not have it where a half day off for anybody who wants to volunteer at a school. Paid half day off instead of having to take that from your vacation time or get docked pay. How about that? That's a simple solution. So these are just the tip of the iceberg. And you know, you can do just small things, you can do big things to change the world, but what I'm really asking you to do is think about at the beginning when everybody's hand was raised and realize how connected we are by motherhood. Motherhood has influenced your life, whether it's your mom or somebody else's mom. Motherhood has influenced your decisions and, and impacted who you are as a person. It's a motherhood, mothers have impacted the world. And remember, most of all, that mothers are powerful. And with your help, we can change the world. Thank you.